the goal is reinforced in quiet contemplation. Then realized on college basketball's greatest stage. Mike Davis has reached heights no one imagined at Indiana. His Hoosiers found the way to Atlanta with red hot shooting and a team philosophy to play like one. Oklahoma went west for its final four frontier, finding the price of success preached by Kelvin Sampson from the beginning. Hard work and intensity make winning and the Sooners inseparable. Roy Williams' team has been perched atop college basketball for much of the year. Kansas knows what it takes to be good, but for this season to make history, their play now must be golden. Maryland, with its Final Four experience, learned it takes more than the magic wand. And Gary Williams avows the second time will come from the heart. Four teams, one dream. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome here in Atlanta where we await the start of the second of today's national semifinals, Kansas against Maryland in game number one. Indiana defeated Oklahoma by a score of 73-64 just a short while ago. Bonnie Bernstein had a chance to talk with Oklahoma coach Kelvin Sampson. Well, early in the game, Calvin Sampson, I saw you talking to your team about not having enough discipline. Came out with a lot of fire, but so did Indiana. Well, discipline is a um, starts with decisions and judgment. There was a flurry of um, possessions there where we kept attacking the basket. And instead of attacking and kicking it out for open shots, we kept trying to shoot it over them. And you know, with uh, Jeffries and um, uh, Newton, they've got good shot blockers. You know, and sometimes uh, today, in today's game, we didn't do a good enough job of sharing the ball and making each other better. Seems like we had to, we were taking some hard, harder shots than we should have been taking. That's a byproduct of sometimes not making, not using good judgment. When you look at foul trouble, Jabari Brown in early, Aaron McGee fouled out, and naturally you would have had to rely more on your backcourt from some scoring, particularly Hollis Price. Defensively, they, they did a pretty good job. I thought our guards did a pretty good job. We, we had to go zone there to protect our big guys from foul trouble. Um, but, you know, our, our post got stuck behind some time, and we didn't support. And, you know, our, our defense, uh, which has been great all year long, um, obviously wasn't as good today as it needed to be. And, you know, in a game like this, um, uh, you, you've just got to play better. We no excuses. I, Indiana played better than we did today, and, and um, you know, I wish them well. If I would have told you before the game that, of all people, Jeff Newton, was going to yeah. come out and score 19 points. I think it's safe to say you would have looked at me kind of funny. Well, he wasn't the uh, one that I would have guessed had 19 points, but you have to give him credit. You know, and th these games are opportunities for people to step up and um, um, create memories and make big plays. And Jeff Newton did. I thought our kids hung in there. When it got when we got it to 60-60, I still thought we were going to win. But at that point on, uh, Indiana made the big plays. All right, well, Calvin, I appreciate your time. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Classy man, the head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, Kelvin Sampson, and you heard him mention Indiana shot blockers. One of the amazing numbers from that first game, Clark, is that Indiana blocked eight shots to Oklahoma's one. And part of it was due to what Kelvin Sampson just said, his team attacking, not being as patient as, he, as they needed to be. But the other part of it was just excellent defense by Indiana. George Leach with the denial. George Leach again with the denial. Then inside, that's Leach again throwing it out of there. Quick off their feet, excellent timing. Newton stepping in, getting his hands on the ball. Dietrich trying to attack. Newton sends it away. Newton sends it away again. And as you look at these plays, most of those blocks were smaller guys taking it into the bigger Indiana guys. And then the three-point shooting in the second half, Greg. Indiana knocked down six three-pointers in the second half on six attempts. Donald Perry there, Kyle Hornsby here. And I think, again, being able to throw the ball inside and take advantage of their strength up front, 
allowed Indiana to get some better three point looks in that second half. And you talk about those three pointers. Remember, Indiana shot just two out of seven in the first half, came out and shot six for six in the second half. We'll take a timeout. We'll continue from Atlanta in just a moment. The Jayhawks were concerned about guard Kirk Heinrich's condition after he injured his ankle in the first round, but he came back strong and has averaged nearly 11 points a game along the road to Atlanta. Maryland's Lonnie Baxter was named his region's most outstanding player for the second straight year. Among his accomplishments, 29 points and nine rebounds in the Terrapins regional final victory over UConn. And we welcome you back to the Georgia Dome. The Terps have been on a team on a mission all season long. Haunted by their performance in last year's national semifinals, Maryland set its sights on more than a return to the Final Four. For Maryland, last season was like a dream. For the first time in school history, the Terrapins advanced to the Final Four, where they met their arch rivals, the Duke Blue Devils. But the dream season quickly became a nightmare for Maryland as it blew a 22-point lead and lost in the national semifinals. These broken wings, I need your hands to come and heal me once again. I still I need your time. It was you know, the worst loss I ever had. I mean, you know, to be up like that and you know, have your emotion going and then for it all to be taken away from you so fast, um, it's uh, one of the most disappointing things that has happened in my career. This year, our chemistry, we know how to win. And um, like we be down in situations, and um, when the game is on the line, every, every guy on the team knows their role, and they just come to play, and um, we come out victorious. And um, I think that's a great thing of this season and last season. You know, it's been very amazing, you know. I mean, we always knew we had the talent. It was a matter of us going out every night, you know, just giving it our best. You know, that's what we did all year. You know, we just been playing spectacular. Spectacular may just be an understatement. Maryland went undefeated at home in its final season at legendary Cole Fieldhouse, and the Terps won their first outright ACC regular season title since 1980. We can beat you from different aspects of the game. Um, we can go inside and pound it inside with Lonnie and, and Chris Wilcox, and, and if that's working, you know, that'll open up the outside for myself, Juan and Byron. I mean, we have a, a true cast of players that can, you know, do big things on any given night. It's like we've been together forever. Everybody knows everybody well. I mean, it's like a big family, and to see how we play, you know, everybody just has fun when we go out there. Now, Maryland has returned to the Final Four, poised once again to claim its first national championship. But Gary Williams knows he'll need some good fortune in order to make his 13th season as head coach truly magical. I'm lucky this year. We have a very veteran team. We have outstanding character on our team, so we have a chance to, to go a long way. But, you know, in a one-game playoff, you also realize that uh, anything can happen in one game. We want to, you know, win the whole thing this year. I mean, you know, we wanted to win it last year, of course, also, but, you know, we fell short, and this year we feel we can take it, you know, that extra step further and win the national championship. You know, Final Four isn't winning, so, um, it would be disappointing if we if we don't win, but we're going to work as hard as we can to try to win it all this year. All right, as we approach game two here in the Georgia Dome tonight, let's first know that Mr. Kellogg is on record prior to the last game as saying, be wary of those Indiana Hoosiers, and the Oklahoma Sooners weren't wary enough. Now, we come to Maryland against Kansas. Let's first look at Maryland and figure out what do they have to do to win this game. Well, in the last game, we saw the bench players come up large for Indiana. Jeff Newton, Donald Perry, A.J. Moyje, George Lynch. In this game, it very well could be the same type of situation, although I think an X-Factor player could be Byron Mouton with his ability to defend and do all the little intangibles. Maryland has to do a good job in transition defense and on their defensive backboard because Kansas is a terrific offensive rebounding team. And it's generally considered when you have to go to the bench, Maryland usually has the edge there. What about the Kansas Jayhawks? Well, I think for Kansas, they've got to play their game. They want to play fast but they want to play with poise while they're playing fast. When they've had problems, they've turned the ball over because they've tried to play too fast. 
If they keep it in rhythm, I think transition basketball is their key. All right. We haven't had enough excitement for one evening here in the Georgia Dome. We need more. Coming up, the top seeded team out of the Midwest, the Kansas Jayhawks, against the number one seed from the East, the Maryland Terrapins. The winners advance to Monday night's championship game against Indiana. Jim Nance and Billy Packer will have the call coming your way from the Georgia Dome right after this. The final four continues from the Georgia Dome with the second game of the national semifinals. A pair of number one seeds battle it out for one spot open on Monday night. The Kansas Jayhawks and the Maryland Terrapins about to get started here with the winner taking on Indiana Monday night for the national championship. And again, welcome back, Friendship Nance with Billy Packer. This is so even, Billy. Everybody's been talking about this game all week. It's so even, it even gets down to the coaches. They have the same name. We got the Williams. And when you're on the road to the Final Four, coming off of Interstate 85, you take the Georgia Dome exit. Yes, you even take Williams Street. However, Maryland, out of College Park, Maryland, when they take their exit here in the Atlanta area for their hotel, how about this as an omen? They take the College Park exit. James, we what are broadcasting. We're not reading tea leaves. you got to get back to the game here on me. Well, look how even it is, though, Billy. Look at these tournament stats and the tail of the tape between these two. It really is amazing, but both of these clubs have had great years. Kansas undefeated in the Big 12, which was arguably the best league in the country. Maryland 15 and 1 in the ACC, both led by great first team All American players. True Gooden of Kansas. This is a player, Billy, when you talk about Gooden, he averages a double double a game. He really does. In the last two NCAA tournament games, 33 points, 33 rebounds. He is a very versatile player, moves inside and out, block shots, rebounds, better than maybe anybody will see in this game. And how about Juan Dixon for Maryland? Well, he was. The ACC Player of the Year. A truly great story who has worked his way now to two Final Fours. He would like nothing more than to take his great ability and lead this team once again. All right, Billy, it's always special when you have ones battling at the Final Four. We've got them, and it's coming up next. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semifinal is sponsored by Singular Wireless. Marriott, Volvo, and by Bud Light. Back at the Georgia Dome, and now let's introduce you to the starting lineups. Here's Jackie Bowe. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Georgia Dome for tonight's second round semifinal game between the University of Kansas Jayhawks and the University of Maryland's Terrapins. Let's meet the starting lineups. At center for Kansas, listed at 6'10", a junior from Richmond, California, wing zero, Drew Gooden. At forward for Maryland, listed at 6'6", a senior from Rainey, Louisiana, number one, Baron Mouton. At forward for Kansas, listed at 6'9", a junior from Iowa Falls, Iowa, wearing number four, Nick Callison. At center for Maryland, listed at 6'8", a senior from Silver Spring, Maryland, wearing number 35, Lonnie Baxter. At guard for Kansas, listed at 6'1", a senior from Valley City, North Dakota, wearing number 13, Jeff Boshi. Forward from Maryland, listed at 6'10", a sophomore from Whiteville, North Carolina, number 54, Chris Wilcox. At guard for Kansas, listed at 6'3", a junior from Sioux City, Iowa, wearing number 10, Kurt Heinrich. At guard from Maryland, listed at 6'3", a junior from Miami Lakes, Florida, wearing number 25, Steve Blake. 
guard for Kansas, listed at 6'1", a freshman from Portland, Oregon, wearing number 11, Aaron Miles. At guard from Maryland, listed at 6'3", a senior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 3, Juan Dixon. Introducing the head coaches for Kansas, Roy Williams. And for Maryland, Gary Williams. Gary Williams, only the second coach to ever take his alma mater to two Final Fours. Jim Beheim, the other. Back to back years for Maryland. Roy Williams bringing Kansas to the promised land for the third time in his 14 years in Kansas. Billy, how about the Packer points here? Well, anchorman, we're talking about Collison and Baxter. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, look at how close they are in scoring, is the fact that they get into foul trouble. Collison has fouled out of six games. He's had four fouls in, a, in 11 others, so that's really critical. Instant offense, both of these teams not only get bench production, but great production off the bench. Kansas with a slight edge there, 24 to 21. That's going to be very important in tonight's game. Be quick, but don't hurry. The assist to turnover ratio for Kansas is good, but for Maryland, it is excellent. Slight edge to Maryland in that one. And of course, we get down to one glaring difference between these two teams, and that is rebounding. Look at Kansas, an 8.9 rebound advantage. Maryland just 3-7, so a little assist turnover ratio to Maryland, rebounding edge to Kansas. These two teams, Jim, are as close as any two teams we've seen in a Final Four go head-to-head. -head. I sense sitting with you at practice yesterday that this rebounding issue you felt going in was going to be the difference. It really is, and sometimes you wonder why Maryland has problems on the boards that they do against better teams. We saw Connecticut kind of take it to them just last week with a much smaller basketball team. Higgins, Hightower, and Corbett with the honor of officiating this semifinal. Gooden takes the tip, but actually right under the arms of Mouton. Stole the tap. Wilcox never even got up. Wilcox. And Gooden with the good box out to begin. Gooden much quicker to the ball and rebounding than is Baxter. Baxter, a man with a big body. Gooden, that shot blocked by Wilcox. And that will be some matchup right there. Wilcox can play anybody in the country when he is motivated to do so, as he was against Mike Dunleavy of Duke. He can go outside or in. Steve Blake going against a freshman point guard. Many expect a big game here by Blake tonight. He's had some struggles in the tournament, and a steal here by the Hawks. Miles back over Collison. Gooden swatted away. Second rejection for Wilcox. No one in the United States and the college level goes up as high as Wilcox. So quick off the floor. Aaron Miles lost his shoe. The officials, because that ball was knocked way out of bounds, give him a little time here to readjust. How much has Wilcox improved? from his uh, sophomore to junior year, uh, freshman to sophomore year. Well, without question, Jim, you're talking about a young man that's probably improved as much as anybody. Last year in the Duke game in the semifinals, to give you an example, he played six minutes and had two points. So you were looking at a guy who was slight coming off the bench to a guy now that could be a major factor in his game. Both teams straight man to man. Collison Baxter. This will be some matchup, and Nick Collison puts Kansas on the board first. Good move by both coaches. They are going to take that anchor band position and force them to guard each other. Which one gets into foul trouble? And thrown away by Mouton. The Maryland Road out of the East to the Final Four. First time ever in school history, a number one seed. Went through Siena, Wisconsin. That's the largest margin of victory in Terrapin NCAA history. And then Kentucky and the Yukon Classic, where there were 24 lead changes. Baxter, Baxter. with the great hands. Not a great leaper, but he has oh, the hands. Blake put that right above the rim. Early in the game, Jim, I question whether or not you want to make that pass. You want to get in your half-court offense, 
let Dixon touch the ball some. Going for home runs early can be just big turnovers. And they have turned it over, Billy, three of their first four possessions. Heinrich, open, three-pointer guns it. Right now, Collison is getting an excellent position on Baxter down low. I think that Collison's doing a much better job positioning defensively on Baxter. Blake, surrounded, gives it up, Baxter. And he'll, oh, they're calling a charge on Baxter. Collison stood his ground. Baxter trying to go through two. There was good in there, so Collison realized he didn't have to go for the shot block. He wisely stays on the ground. Dixon has not yet touched the ball for Maryland, Jim. Not a good move for their team. Maryland's been shut out the first two and a half. Collison, that one's blocked. Pass somehow gets through to Mouton for that, Maryland's first. That was not the intention. There you go, Kansas running off the break. They do that better than anybody in college basketball. Second foul on Baxter, and what we talked about at the top of the show, critical already, fortunately for Gary Williams. He goes to the bench with some good talent. It'll be Holden or Randall coming in early. And he's going to go with Taj Holden. He has two players with good size coming off that bench. Holden, and as you said, Randall, and he feels Randall. I'm talking about Gary Williams. Now, one of the will things, be a big key here today. Jim, one of the things that was, I thought, very obvious real early in this game, Baxter was not getting as good a position defensively as was Collison. And so he finds himself sitting down, and he has been so productive for this team. So two fouls on Baxter in less than three minutes, a charge at one end, and a hack on Miles at the other, and 7-2 Kansas. MVP of the East Regional sitting down. Blake probably should have shot that ball. And Dixon pinned underneath. And it's Kansas ball out of bounds. Too tight a quarter to make a pass. This Kansas team, and you can see why already, Billy, if you haven't watched the Jayhawks this year, is the highest scoring team in America on the season. Well, they push the ball up. They actually almost have a fast break when you make a basket. Hollison, turn around. Heinrich. Tipped around, and Holden has it for the Terrapins. Heinrich not blocked out on that play. A good position for an offensive rebound. Holden likes that shot. Gooden sweeps for the board. Here they come. Heinrich with a three, and Maryland faces its biggest deficit of the tournament. Gary Williams wisely calls a timeout. His team has not met the test in their half-court offense. The biggest deficit prior to this was six to Kentucky. They're down eight early to the Jayhawks. Get into overdrive with the 2002 Saturn L200. Just 202 due and 265 a month. Visit your nearest Saturn retailer today. This is something you seldom see. Kansas's road to the Final Four. Billy, they had to play the highest possible seed in each game. 16 and 8, a 4, and then the 2 in the final, which was Oregon. Jim, that's why I say nobody ever gets to the championship game worrying about who they're going to play in the next one. Juan Dixon with a 3. And there, inside position, Kansas getting every rebound. Collison, before they could even turn around. Foul. And the foul is out near the free throw line, says Timmy Huggins. I think it's going to be not, it's going to be before the shot, yep. so there will not be any foul shots taken. It's called on Mouton. They asked Roy Williams yesterday, Roy, how badly do you want to win a championship? In your third Final Four, he said, about as badly as I want to breathe. <laughs> Well, we did see a man who's here to root him on. Good backdoor cut by Miles. No place to go. Gooden chases it down and saves it to Boshi with a three. Kansas speeding Maryland to every loose ball. Boshi makes it an 11-point lead. And with Baxter on the bench with those two fouls, Maryland already does not have their low post game. There's Collison on a foolish, foolish foul out front on Holden. Drew Nicholas will come in for Maryland after this timeout. The Jayhawks jump on the Terps early. 
Armand Katayan back in Atlanta. Kansas certainly seems to be taking Roy Williams' message in the locker room to heart. He said because of all the distractions and all the people in the stands, the magnitude of the moment, they had to lose themselves in the game, which they're doing. Bonnie? Gary Williams already frustrated with the Terps rebounding. He said one of the reasons why Kansas is so good at it, Collison and Gooden really chase after the ball. All too often, we just accept what comes off the rim. We have to be more aggressive on that end tonight, Jim. Thank you, Bonnie. Wayne Simeon is in. Wilcox on the dunk and taking advantage of that substitution. Collison went out. They beat him on the inbounds. The freshman just had to back up and yield to Wilcox. We got a steal here. Simeon throws it to Dixon. But right back come the Hawks. On the wing, Boshi. Boy, they're moving quickly. They really are. We're seeing, oh, what another great block by Wilcox. He has three already. Dixon pull up three. Well, right. He thought he made it. It was, yeah, right, it was on right on the mark. But you have to get back on defense when you play Kansas. They will push the ball in every situation. Their delayed break is really excellent. Jim, we've seen so many breakdowns in the NCAA tournament and out of bounds situations. Just time and time again, the players are not seeing the area of the court that they have to cover as well as the man passing the ball in bounds, and that's what's causing them problems. Yeah. Now we have that bench from yeah. Kansas deployed on the floor. Simeon and Lang. And a great move, I think, by Gary, by uh, Roy Williams to take Collison out of the game with Baxter on the bench with two. Charge. Charge on Heinrich. Blake had set coming out of that break and then uh, check right back in. He draws the charge. Heinrich. And Dixon with a short break also returns. How many guys come down on the break and do not pull up at the foul line to get the good angle on that pass? The farther you go down in there, you better have an open lane for the layup because you take it beyond the foul line and you're almost invariably going to charge. Now, I was talking about this substitution. You say, well, Collison's not in foul trouble. But if you're Roy Williams, you want to steal some minutes here with a man that played very effectively early while Baxter's sitting down with two. Dunk over the top to Gooden. And a foul on, I believe, Simeon. I think it might be Gooden. Yep, it is Gooden. Wilcox first. Making himself available. The young man, as you said, Jim, in one year's time, Really had his coming out party this year when Maryland actually destroyed Duke up at their place, and uh, he was just a handful. And this is another area where he's improved himself, the free throw shooter. Well, yeah, to speak of Duke, and we all remember last year it was Maryland and Duke in the semifinals here in Minneapolis, Final Four, and Duke came back from 22 down to win that game. And Gary Williams was telling us hopefully it makes you even better having gone through something like that. Langford, they faced an early 11-point deficit working it the other way this year. Now Maryland trying to return the favor by getting down on the break themselves. Good screen by Holden. Dixon! The screen was as important as the shot. Just a great job, and Dixon, as we know, loves to run that baseline, and with that wide body of Holden, it's impossible to get to him. Three-pointer cuts it to five. Six-nothing run here by the Terps. Boshi. Push off. Simeon on the push off. Good block out by Holden. Kansas in its 11th Final Four with two titles. 1952, they celebrated that 50-year anniversary of that team that included Dean Smith on the 52 champs. And, of course, the 88, Danny Manning and the Miracle team. Dean, Dean Smith, one of two to play and to coach a national championship team. Bob Knight, the other. Ryan Randall in for the Terps, number 33. There, Langford Dixon. See if Dixon tried to take advantage of the freshman. He does. Langford's coming off his biggest game of his freshman year, that in the regional final when he put up 20 against Oregon. Collison right back in, Billy. He was six for seven in that game, Jim. That's really saying something, but that was a track meet. Kansas just destroying Oregon off the boards. Drew Nicholas, and he's a shooter, but not this time. Off Randall, Kansas ball. And here's why we see Maryland so effective 
even with Baxter on the bench, Randall and Holden are two fine players. Now Collison back in there. Roy Williams got some minutes. He can put him back in the game now and see how effective he can be offensively. Matter of fact, if Collison hadn't made that one very foolish oh. ball, there's Dixon on his patented steals. And he's going to have the easy lay-in. Number one steel man at his university and in the ACC, and very seldom does it against your dribble. He does it with incredible anticipation. And again, the second part of that, what makes it so fascinating, is the number of times he fouled out in his career. Collison. Absolutely, a foul out ratio of zero in 108 yeah. games. Can you imagine that? A guy that makes that many thefts is not reaching in. Blake again has got a chance to shoot and doesn't take it. Nicholas three-pointer. Good blocking out by Collison. Randall doesn't try to go around him. Some pace in this game. Simeon down there on Randall. Good low post score. Simeon hits the shot. The freshman homegrown from Leavenworth, Kansas. With that hy hyperextended knee, gave him problems. He had that uh, knee injury November the uh, 15th. Came back his first game against Wake Forest. 10 points, 11 rebounds. Showed that he was going to be an important factor for this team. Dixon keeping Maryland close. I don't know if Lankford can stay with Dixon. Dixon with eight of Maryland's 13. Heinrich, spin move, and he'll head to the line. Heinrich, you talk about guys that have come onto the scene. Now, Jim, we saw him in the NCAA tournament down in Winston-Salem in his freshman year play a great, great game against Duke University. He leveled off a little bit, but really this year he has come on, not only first team all Big 12, but has put himself in a position, you have to say there are not many guards in the country any better. Uh, Heinrich will shoot one more. Originally committed to Iowa State out of Sioux City, Iowa, did Heinrich. But once Tim Floyd left the program, he went back and reworked that decision, and it came down to either Kansas or Oklahoma. And was co-Mr. Basketball in the state of Iowa his last year with Nick Collison. Not a bad teammate. Yeah. 18-13, Hawks. Kansas in front by five. And, Billy, here's the Mountain Dew eye vision. Well, here's what I want you to see right here. Watch where the screen becomes as important to the shot. We're going to see Langford get caught right over here trying to get the screen. Dixon with a fake in, jumps back. And watch what happens as he tries to go for the curl. There is a screen that ties up two men. Dixon makes the shot. Now watch Kansas. I want to watch it. Boom, 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 and here comes Heinrich ready to start that delayed break. You cannot relax even if you score. Dixon, oh, what he a shot. has the touch tonight. You can see it early. Ten points already for Dixon. You say tonight, Jim, when has he not had the touch? Uh -huh. 29 against Siena, 29 Wisconsin, 19 Kentucky, 27 Connecticut. Pretty good run in the NCAA tournament. Foul here on uh, Maryland, on Randall. And he's off the bench with his first foul, and Mouton comes back. Nicholas out. Mouton probably the most versatile. He can guard more different type of people than anybody on this Maryland club. He's got Lankford now. Collison finds the handle, and he sees Langford cutting down the lane. Back to Collison. Oh, boy, what blocks inside. And no whistles. Loose ball, and is it a tie-up? And, and there is where Gary Williams got incredible help from Randall. He just kept flailing around on the inside. He really doesn't get a piece of this. That probably was a foul not called. Here's Randall again, and there is Wilcox always up there. But look at Randall just with that body flailing all over. <laughs> Mouton around the leg. It was a tie-up, and the arrow ball remains with Kansas. Kansas. Big rebounding edge here at the start. Not unexpected. Collison on the quicker Wilcox, doing a better job blocking out. Langford kicked that out to keep it alive. Boy, what, Langford really does a good job going after every offensive rebound. Nobody blocking him. Mouton led too much. Second time Wilcox made an errant pass. 
trying to make a play that's not there. Well, just a reminder that we're a little more than, well, a week away from a tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS with late night coverage on the 11th and 12th and then full coverage over the weekend on CBS. Randall on Collison now can afford to foul. Gooden with two Terps on him gets the soft roll. His first basket. Gooden started out winning the Great Alaskan Shootout MVP award as a freshman. You knew then that he was going to be an outstanding collegiate player. Has gotten stronger and has really worked on all aspects of his game. You could argue that he's been the best player in college basketball this year. Mouton in the right spot. And Mouton realized he'd better get back down court, but he doesn't get any help from his teammates getting back down in Kansas again on the delayed break beats them. Boshi with the jumper, 22-17 Kansas. Poor communication, Maryland. Wilcox with a nice flip. He's making Gooden have to work in the defensive end of the floor now that he's matched up with him. It was pretty dire here early for the Terrapins, Billy, down 11 with the man who's been their outstanding player in the last two regionals for him on the bench with two fouls. Cut it back to three. And Heinrich unable to hit from the corner. Mouton going for the glass right now. Well, Jim, we talk about comebacks for a team. We saw Kansas a number of years ago with the biggest comeback in their history when they came back against UCLA. But Maryland's comebacks this year, they were down by 13 in the first half against Princeton. And you know the way Princeton makes it so tough to come back. And they were down 10 against Wake Forest and came back and won both of those games. So they do have the ability to do so. Collison out, Billy, with his second. And Jeff Carey sees his first action. Senior from Camdenton, Missouri. So now we have the two anchors, both on the bench with two fouls. Will Cox not aggressively going after the ball. Gooden beats him to it. Gary Williams stomping down the other end of his floor, saying, what are we thinking about? This is a quick team. Would you say he puts a lot of effort into a game? Oh. <laughs> I think he's more exhausted at the end of a game than any player. And a push off here. It's going to be called against Carey of Kansas. Tries to get to the spot, but not in time, as Holden was going to set another patented screen for Dixon. And that's the seventh team foul. So a one and one with Nicholas replacing Blake. Taj Holden. Impressive looking junior from Red Bank, New Jersey at the line for one and one. Jim, and if there's anything about this Maryland's run in the NCAA tournament, they're shooting 85.7 from the foul line. That is the second best free throw shooting in the history of the NCAA tournament. Only St. John's in 1969 where they shot 87% has shot any better. Two for two for Holden. And it's a one-point game. Maryland goes to a 2-1-2 full court press in the trap. And they force the steal. Boshi reaches in, and Heinrich is off and running. Miles. You don't see Dixon turn it over very often like that. That was a big turnover. Maryland had the numbers going in the other direction. Dixon trying to get loose on Heinrich, but Heinrich doesn't mind the contact. Mouton. And look at Heinrich come running through. Beat Wilcox to the ball. What Maryland's trying to do, they're trying to put Boshi down inside, let Mouton post him up. Boshi gets the screen from Carey. And Gooden right underneath, hammered by Holden to the line for two. I said Juan Dixon keeping him in the game here early. Uh, Jimmy has been an amazing basketball player throughout his career. We all know about the story of him coming to school, had to redshirt his first year, only weighed about 145 pounds. You said there's no way this guy's going to be a factor for the University of Maryland. Probably not even going to be an ACC type player. But he has become the all-time leading scorer, passing Lenny Bias this year in the school's history. Three-time ACC first-teamer. 
First guy at Maryland to do that since the great John Lucas. One more for Gooden. Langford back to the lineup. Now it's Heinrich on Dixon down the baseline. If you want to watch a guy who moves well without the ball being guarded by a guy that doesn't mind guarding someone down there, watch those two. Not a good shot. Mouton tips, and Langford clears. Kansas controlling the boards. Wilcox very tired right now. Heinrich right past Dixon. Wilcox hustled to get the rebound at the other end. Nicholas gives it up. Holden. It's two at the line. So many times you see a man with the ball that's not used to being the point guard, although Nicholas does have some talent, should have passed that ball much earlier to Dixon, who was on the wing. He ended up with a bad angle, being too far down in the basket. So the second on Kirk Heinrich. Holden will shoot two. Gary Williams, 25 years ago, Billy, the last time the Final Four was held here in Atlanta. He came here for the NABC, the National Association of Basketball Coaches Conference. He was just a, an assistant coach at Lafayette. Under Tom, Tom Davis. Under Tom Davis. Says, I yep. would not be a college coach. He always stresses to me how much Davis deserves a lot of the credit. He's returned a quarter century later with his alma mater at the Final Four. They're down two at the moment. Here's the Pontiac Vibe Skycam. Look at the four Kansas players. Here's what I was talking about Nicholas. He's got to get the ball over here, make Heinrich have to play somebody, and then they have an easy layup. Instead, he continues with the ball. Heinrich is able to guard four men by himself. All Maryland gets out of it is an opportunity to go to the line. The quick pass on the break forces the defender back there, Jim, to have to commit. And instead, Heinrich was able to play a one-man zone against four. Kansas has brought in for the first time Brett Ballard, senior from Hutchinson, Kansas, number three. Did you think that Brett would be in in the first half with the score 25-23? We see the two, two coaches who get along very well. A lot of ACC heritage there. Of course, Roy Williams, the longtime assistant with Dean Smith at North Carolina. Gary uh, coaching at Maryland at that time. Gary, of course, a player at Maryland. There is a leak in the roof, Jim, that could cause a problem for slippage. We remember a game that was so important this year with a court that was creating slippage. Michigan Virginia. State yeah. and Virginia. And could have been a game that kept Virginia out of the NCAA tournament. Baxter sitting over there getting a long, long rest in this one. He's back in the ball game now. 7.44 to go in the half. He's got two fouls on him and has to be very, very careful. We had a similar problem, if you recall, at the 96 championship game, Kentucky and Syracuse. But the situation here has been cleared. Second time, Maryland's gone to their zone trap. Dixon almost picks one off. Unusual lineup on the floor right now for Kansas. Heinrich cuts through, and the ball tipped out to Juan Dixon. Jump shot. Pull up. Three-pointer. You cannot allow, if you're Kansas, Juan Dixon to have the ball crossing half court, and nobody picked him up. Maryland's first lead tonight. After being down 11 early, 13-2. Roy Williams. Got a very funny lineup, and here's Dixon with that ability to come from the weak side, almost gets by with a steal. Probably only Gooden's great hands prevented it. Collison, Boshi, and Miles all back in. Holden for Maryland returns. That's the first foul on Dixon. And it's a one and one for Drew Gooden. It is amazing the anticipation that Dixon has, Jim, as a defensive player. Thinks all the time, where can the next pass go? How can I beat it to the spot? Drew Gooden, first team All-America with Dixon. 25 double-doubles this year, including 18 points, 20 rebounds in the regional final win over Oregon, where he won the Midwest Outstanding Player Award. Langford keeps it alive. And Mouton out battles for the board. Langford, Langford really active in the offensive glass. 
Now Miles is going to have to guard Dixon down on the baseline. Again, a tough test for a freshman. Heinrich did such a great job down there. There he is. He's got a hard time staying with him. Spin move and short on the jumper. Out to Langford. Miles Whoa. accepted by Holden. Mouton with Nicholas there also. Travel. You can get live team and player stats for Kansas and Maryland in the Game Center at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Just enter the keyword CBS Sports Line. Jim, that's the fourth time in this half that Maryland has given away baskets when they had the numbers trying to go over the top of the pass instead of keeping it on the ground. Good and turn around. And a battle underneath. Holden calls a timeout as he goes to the floor, gets one. 26 all for the two one seeds at the final four. A large part of the uniqueness of March Madness, the Cinderella, and we have one. All set now for the Monday night final, Indiana. After its nine point win over Oklahoma today. Jim, first time Kansas goes zone, holding a good shooter in there. Speaking of good shooters, Dixon. Holden, Holden right hand. takes it away, good Holden. protects. They'll count the basket. We saw Oklahoma go to zone in that first game, which gave Indiana the confidence to get good looks from the outside. Here you see Holden, who's had a very good first half, having to play a lot of minutes. How quick. Oh, and off the hands of Gooden was Wilcox battled for that. How quick is Wilcox to get around the All-American good low post player in Gooden? Get a hand on that ball. Randall back in. Wilcox out. And Gary Williams, since his team got in a position to get the lead, wisely takes Baxter out of the game. Very subtle substitution moves, but I think very smart. Blake, three. Last touch by Maryland. Maryland becoming here the 14th well, 14 of the last 15 years, an ACC team, at least one, in all the but, Final Four. All but 96. Syracuse, Mississippi State, Massachusetts, and Kentucky. Lang for tough shots. Well, he is so aggressive offensively. Really going to put up some big numbers as a scorer in the Big 12. Now they stay in the zone, kind of the point zone that Dean Smith developed at the University of North Carolina. Nicholas three, yes. Kansas doesn't run as well out of that zone defense either. Under five minutes to play in the first half. Maryland leading at 31-28. Collison has his pocket picked. Three on one, and Blake takes it in. Foul on Boshi. Much better execution of the three-on-one break. And there you see, again, Dixon anticipating that Collison was going to use the reverse dribble, and he was waiting for it. Boy, he's a smart ball player. Just fun to watch the subtleties of his game. Blake's tournament averages below the season average. And talking to the Maryland people this week, they'll tell you that He's been put a little bit on edge at Steve Blake, and they really felt he'd come up big here today. For people saying he hasn't had the best of tournaments. However, he's hit a couple of very critical shots that should not be uh, diminished or well, changed. Kentucky, and then the one that knocked out UConn last Sunday. There again was the 2-2-1 full court press. Oh, she could get a better look. Spins away from Nicholas. Heinrich had the look, didn't take it. Langford drives in, banks it home again. He just knows how to score. You know, the thing interesting about that shot, too, Jim, was that the play initially by Gary Williams was not called for Blake. He called them off. Dixon doubled up, and Langford lands on him. Well, at least for Gary Williams, I mean, for... At least for, in this situation, it wasn't a Collison foul. 
We've got Roy Williams and Gary Williams on my mind, hard keeping them straight. But yeah, all these Williams yeah. out here on the benches. That's the tenth team foul, second on Langford. So two for Dixon. Don't see that often. No, a 90% free often. throw shooter. Came into the final four, missing only one free throw in the NCAA tournament in four games. And before he shoots a free throw, there's a tap right there on the chest. And that's in memory of his mother, Juanita. There is a artist rendering a tattoo on his chest of his late mother, Juanita. Langford way outside. There's Randall, and you see where Maryland has really had in Randall and Holden great help off the bench. Particularly with Baxter's production basically non existent in this first half. Holden. Thomason behind him. They go back outside, and, and that'll be three shots at the line for Dixon. You know what Dixon did on that shot, Jim? He altered his shooting stroke when he saw that Boshi was going to have a piece of the ball. He moved the ball farther over to his left. This is an amazing shot. Watch this. He's going up for his normal shot. He alters it a little bit so that he can get it onto the baseline. You notice it doesn't have the same rotation that he normally has, but that was the only way to get the shot off. Dixon now in the tournament, 19 out of 21 at the line. Still has one more. Well, he screamed at that one a little bit. I talked about his late mother. It's been well documented. He lost both of his parents. There's his hero, his older brother, Phil. Yes, you're <laughs> on TV, Phil, and you deserve it. He was a Division III All-America at Shenandoah University and wore number three and turned one on the basketball. He wears his brother's jersey number at Maryland. Nice move by Simeon. Freshman to freshman. We talked about these two benches not just getting minutes, but being very productive. And here we see Kansas staying in this zone. Inside, Wilcox. Oh, short on the lay-in. I think he felt he was a little closer to the basket, Jim. And that's kicked out. Reset the 35. 36-32. Terrapins lead behind Dixon, 16. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Armand Katayan, and Bonnie Bernstein here at the Georgia Dome. A 15 to 5 Maryland stretch here over the last five minutes. What's turned it around since that quick burst by Kansas led them to an 11 point lead early? Well, one of the things that I think that Maryland did so well, and they uh, have had this happen all year long, to get Baxter out of the game, and in comes uh, Holden and Randall to do a great job so that Kansas just couldn't explode on them. But both of these teams, Langford's had a good first half for Kansas as well. Both of these teams get great production off the bench. Collison, nice move in the lane. Nick Collison was six, coming off 25-15. And they stay in the zone defense. Look for Dixon to try to get open. There he is. Dixon, a three. They cannot stay with him in this zone. Heinrich splits the defenders, drives it all the way for two. Heinrich asking for another call on the defense, but he doesn't get it. They stay right back in the zone. Dixon moving around, trying to find a hole. Blake, three-point shot. Randall inside, put back. Wilcox up with it, yes. Now what you're seeing is the big, strong bodies from Maryland are getting inside position, Jim as opposed to being beaten to the spot as they were earlier in the game. What, the, what an overplay by Dixon. Wouldn't let Boshi get the ball. And Boshi drives in, gives it up Simeon. Steps. Is it steps or a foul? They've got differing opinions, and Hightower overrules. He uh, calls it traveling. That was a great piece of officiating there, one waiting for the other who had the better look. 
Coming up singular at the half, Greg and Clark will have the first half analysis. Plus, I can see him up there on the set. Mike Davis will join them, as well as Jared Jeffries. That's all coming up on singular at the half. Kansas gets out of that defense, gets back into heavy play man to man. Timeout called by Nicholas with a minute 10 to go, first half. And Gary Williams saying, why pick up your dribble at that point on the floor? You'd have to agree. Indiana has advanced to the championship game. Maryland, Kansas. Which one will meet them Monday night? A minute 10 to go in the first half. Maryland with possession and the five-point lead. Dixon gives it up. Wilcox on the drive. Oh, he traveled first. Is that what they call oh, it? No, no. That's a foul. A foul on Heinrich. Boy, that was a great catch in traffic. Watch this bounce pass. A terrific catch right here. In traffic. Concentrates. Great job by Wilcox. A little pick and roll. Second. Foul is going on Gooden. So it's Gooden's foul, his second. Wilcox three-point opportunity. Makes it eight. And Maryland on all made free throws are staying in that zone press. Bird hacked on the way up at the other end by Wilcox. This is now Kansas's largest tournament deficit. You know who had it on them before? Holy Cross. Holy Cross, you are right. Five point Holy Cross second half lead in the first round matchup with the 16th seeded Crusaders. That was a struggle in that game. I remember, Jim, wherever we were, we were watching it, and Holy Cross was staying right with them. Believe they belong there. Juan Dixon after a brief respite takes Nicholas's position. Holy Cross, a team that has won a national championship back in another era. 47. George Captain. Bob Cousy was uh, on that team. It was not the star. No, he was not. George Captain was a great star on that team. Kansas only 5 of 10 from the free throw line, and the Jayhawks are down 8. Randall Jumper. Surprising shot there. Blake battling for it, and Blake's going to be whistled for it. <laughs> and what you have, Juan Dixon is talking to Randall and saying, young man, just give the ball over to me. I've got the hot hand right now. With 31 seconds to go, if you're Maryland, you would sure rather Randall not take that shot, be ready to go rebound. But he's given him a fine first half, and you figure how little time Baxter has played. Two on Blake. Langford again with a one and one after the ninth team foul. Gooden got in there awful quick. He's got to be careful. Official is doing a fine job there warning him. Don't want to take away a point from a teammate. Keith Langford originally all slated to go to Ole Miss and changed his mind. Signed up with Kansas. He gets one of two and the Terrapins can take the last shot. Well, Holden's not in the game, so uh, we won't expect to see that. Yeah, he's done that a few <laughs> times before, including last Sunday. Lake with 15. They bring it back out. Miles guarding him at seven. Inside Wilcox, and it's Kansas ball. Got plenty of time to get a shot off as well here. Langford's going to come out of the game. And Ballard in with 4.2 seconds. Plenty of time with a Heinrich on the floor to go ahead and take it up the court. But he's not in the game. No, Heinrich not on the floor. It's Ballard instead. And that ball tipped out by Mouton with 7 tenths of a second. And a 7-point margin. Gooden on a back screen, throw the lob up at the backboard and try to draw a foul off it, but they don't go for that play. See if they can get it to Boshi. Yes, three-pointer, almost. <laughs> 
44 37 at halftime. Let's go over to Bonnie Bernstein. All right, Jim. Well, Juan Dixon's got his 19, but Gary, with Lonnie Baxter in foul trouble, talk to me about the importance of your front court depth. Well, Ryan Randall and Todd Solden did a great job. They've been doing that all year, and they know they have to play if Lonnie gets in foul trouble. It was kind of extreme tonight with Lonnie getting too early, but, you know, we're pretty confident with those other two guys out there. Thank you. The Terrapins outscore Kansas after being down 11. 42-24 the rest of the half. And Juan Dixon led the way with 19. Greg and Clark in the Indiana contingent coming up next. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semifinals is sponsored by Mazda MPB, Burger King, the Intel Pentium 4 processor, and by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I'm Greg Gumbel in the Georgia Dome. Coming up on Singular at the half, Clark's first half analysis, and a look ahead to Monday night's national championship with Indiana coach Mike Davis and Jerry Jeffries after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. We are midway through the Kansas-Maryland National Semifinal here in Atlanta. Our score at halftime, Maryland 44 and Kansas 37. And welcome to Singular at the Half, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. A couple of things to keep in mind. Maryland led by 11 points this time last year in the National Semifinal game and lost to Duke. The other thing is that Drew Gooden has a streak of 39 consecutive games scoring in double stats. He has four points so far here in the first game. Joining me is Clark Kellogg. We have another entertaining ball game on our hands. Here. Well, you didn't expect anything less no. than that, did you? Drew Gooden is a key guy for Kansas in the second half. I think he's got to get more touches. But in the first half, as we take a look at the super stats, you see neither team really shooting that well. I think one of the keys is Maryland doing a decent job on the backboards. It's only a three rebound difference. Seven shot blocks for Maryland. Excellent play off the bench from their two big guys, Holden and Randall. But the main man for Maryland has been Juan Dixon. Big numbers in the first half. He does it at both ends of the floor. He scores the ball from the three-point line, but he also disrupts you with the defense. And here he is again, a loose ball. And you've got to tag him in transition. When he gets this kind of time and room, forget about it. All right, now our Mountain Dew eye vision. Well, you take a look at, here we see Kansas able to come up with the steal. Transition basketball. Heinrich in the middle of the break, feeds it to Miles. And we get another angle, and Aaron Miles able to take it to the rim. Kansas has to do more of that. They did a nice job in the first half, in the first part of the first half, and got out to a quick lead. All right, Clark, this reminder for you. For official NCAA Final Four merchandise, click on shop at cbs.sportsline.com. America Online users enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. Earlier this evening, game one of the national semifinals went to the Indiana Hoosiers. The Hoosiers beat Oklahoma 73-64. Early on, Aaron McGee going to work the weak side board, get the basket. And the foul, Oklahoma led 7-5. Then Kyle Hornsby going to shake three. Knocks down the three, the Hoosiers within three. And then Tom Coverdale connects with George Leach for the dunk. Indiana grabbed its first lead at 26-24. And then freshman Donald Perry contributes to the second half three-point barrage. And Kyle Hornsby connects from long range as well. Donald Perry with that layup gave Indiana a lead. They never relinquished. And we are joined now by head coach Mike Davis and forward Jared Jeffries of the Indiana Hoosiers who are headed to Monday night's national championship game to face the winner of this game, either Maryland or Kansas. Congratulations to you both. And, and I just want to know, Mike, and, and you and I were talking about it just before we came on the air. You scored five points in the first seven and a half minutes of the first half. Were you concerned at all over there on the sideline? Well, I know God is watching over me. Um, but I, I thought our defense was good also. Uh, they really didn't score a lot. I think it was 7 to 5 for a long time. Um, that was a great basketball team. We really couldn't judge or gauge how quick they were on, on film. But once we played against them, I knew it would take us a little while to really see for ourselves how quick they were. Jared, talk to me about the game plan that you guys came into the game with and then also how tough it was for you in that first half to find room to operate in the paint. I mean our game plan coming out was just to be aggressive on offense and try to space it out because they have a really good attacking defense 
and try to give us room to operate inside. Um, when I got the ball, they were double teaming me, and doing a good job of fronting me. But um, Odell and Jeff Newton picked it up once they did that because they weren't leaving them to double team and they gave them open looks. I know that Clark is talking about game plan here. And Mike, when you get 41 points off your bench, that means you get 32 from your starters. I know that wasn't the game plan. Well, we feel like Moyer and Newton are starters. Uh, Moyer brings a lot of energy to this basketball team. Jeff Newton for the last month and a half has played fantastic. Um, and when Oda comes out or Hornsby or Fife, they can bring us, they, they make us a better basketball team. And tonight, I thought, um, George Leach came in and played well at, at Donald Perry. And so for Newton to score 19 points, really big for us. You mentioned Moyer. Will you give us an update on his injury? He's fine. He's fine. We plan for the National Championship game on Monday. There's no way he's not going to play. Jared, were you surprised at how much Tom Coverdale played? I don't think he really practiced much at all for you guys this week. I mean, I wasn't at all. I think that the team has total confidence in him. And to really get him out there and play with us is important because it gives us regularity on offense as far as he gets us in our sets. Um, we know his signals and everything. That's good for us. Mike, I'm sorry, oh, go I'm ahead, sorry. Clark. I was going to ask him, looking ahead now, you're going to play one of these two teams that's playing yeah. now. Talk about what you guys may need to focus on because these teams are really similar in what they do and what their strengths and weaknesses are. Both teams have really good guards that can shoot the basketball. And they also have um, two or three big men that rebound really well. And we, it's going to be key for us to block out um, and control the offensive and defensive board and then not let them get out of transition to beat us in transition. Now, Coach, what's the story on tomorrow? You say you're not going to practice tomorrow? Well, we never practice on Sunday. That's that's the rule. Uh, we never practice on Sunday. The guys can go to church uh, if they want to. Um, we will go over the game plans and coaching staff together. Uh, we'll come on Monday morning and, and, and kind of cover it uh, and be ready for Monday night. All right. The, um, it's strange how this game works, isn't it? Here you are, and I, I don't think that even you thought that you'd be this far this early in your career at Indiana. Well, I thought I would because what people don't understand is God has shown me favor. And some people may say I'm crazy, but God has shown me favor. Uh, I have a lot of prayer warriors out there who's, who's praying for me. And he put me here for a reason, to show people that you don't need a big name do something big. Congratulations to you both. We'll see you here on Monday night. Thank right. you. Congratulations. All right, guys. Meanwhile, here's what's on tap tomorrow on CBS at noon Eastern time. You're invited to take a behind the scenes look at the special magic and emotions of the NCAA tournament in the ultimate road to the championship at 3.30. Clark and I will be back with the Midas Final Two show, followed at 4.30 by a CBS Sports special, Glory in Black and White, the story of the 1966 NCAA champions. And then the Final Four weekend reaches its crescendo Monday night, the 1st of April, with the national championship our exclusive CBS Sports coverage begins at 9 Eastern with prelude to a championship. And now here are the rest of the finalists in the Singular Wireless Most Expressive Fan promotion. Log on to Singular.com to cast your vote for the most expressive fan and then find out who wins the grand prize during the championship game. We thank you for watching Singular at the Half. Jim and Billy are standing by to call the second half action between Kansas and Maryland. The winner plays Indiana for the national championship on Monday night. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Maryland leads it by seven, and let's check in on those pre-game Packer points. How are they stacking up here, Billy? Well, we talked about the anchormen, and who would have ever believed Maryland could be in the lead with Baxter with zero points in this first half. Actually sat all but a few minutes. Instant offense, and we got exactly what we expected there. Both teams, great production off the bench. Be quick, but don't hurry, and I think in this particular case, Maryland falling behind here when they should be leading in this category, and the reason for it, they did a bad job on the fast break. And then the glaring difference, and here is where Maryland does a little better job than was expected, and probably one of the reasons this balances out, because they're staying on the boards with Kansas, even though early on in the game, Kansas was dominating. And Lonnie Baxter and the rest of the Terrapins run out. Baxter, only three minutes of action in the first half, but his Turks lead it. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's National Semifinals is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, Pacific Life, Nextel, and by Miller Lite. And let's check the Microsoft Agile move of the first half. Well, we have seen plenty of them, particularly on the inside. There is beautiful technique, the valve pass, 
Heinrich to Collison, then the good drop step move, and a good job by Randall not to follow, but a nice touch by Collison. And let's go over to Armin Katayan. Armin. Thank you, Jim. Talking to Coach Williams, he said two things, really. We've got to take better shots, and we've got to take better care of the basketball. But I asked him this one thing. I said, would you like to see even even faster pace in the second half? He goes, absolutely, only 37 points. We'd like to really run and gun here in the second half. Back to you. Well, that's when they start to really wear you down, and you feel the effects at about the 12-minute mark in many, many situations. We'll see here tonight. Roy Williams, there you see his final four record. We talked about the ACC being represented by at least one team in 14 of the last 15 Final Fours. When Roy goes to the Final Four, he can't escape the ACC. His three games before today, North Carolina, Duke, North Carolina, he lands here and faces Maryland. Well, he had one win, though. He beat North Carolina. Dean yeah. Smith, remember, that's yeah, the game sure. that Dean Smith got ejected and got him to the 91 Final after Duke upset undefeated UNLV. That was uh, 11 years ago today. In Indianapolis, Roy Williams, 51 years of age. Dean Smith won his first national championship in 1982 at the age of 51. There are some 32 and counting former Kansas Jayhawk players who are in the building tonight rooting on the alma mater, which is trailing by seven as we start the second half. Blake on the baseline connects with Wilcox. Well, if you're going to try to double up out on the outside, which Kansas tried to do, it's going to leave something open if the point man beats the double team, and that's what happened. It's the largest lead for Maryland on the night. Gooden, he has to get going in this half, and Baxter had him boxed out. Up ahead, Blake, and Gooden denied the pass. Bad decisions again. Jim, you have a lead. Why would you take a chance to throw a pass like that that has to be absolutely perfect? You've got to make Kansas play defensively. Collison over Baxter. Good for Kansas to go right at Baxter. He did not score in the first half. There he's got it where he wants it. Well, you asked for it. You got it. Lonnie Baxter's first points. That's why that turnover was not a wise pass to try to go for the home run ball. You've got to force Collison to guard Baxter and get Baxter in the game in the second half. Miles in traffic. That's another foul on Baxter. That's his third. Baxter saying, come on, I can't even get going in this game. I can't even work up a sweat. I think that Gary Williams will go with Baxter a little bit longer in this with his third to try to get him in the game and, and keep Holden and Randall out for a while. He's got to get his big man productive. He's played a fraction over four minutes total, and he's saddled with three fouls. Aaron Miles will shoot one more, freshman from Portland, Oregon. It's a big decision by Gary Williams, but I think a wise one, Jim. Leave him in the game. Two for two by Miles. We're talking about Baxter, nine double-doubles. Most valuable player of the Eastern region. There he is, and Thomason forced the steal. And if you are Kansas, bring the ball out and get the ball inside, make Baxter guard Collison. That's Blake's third, so Blake and Baxter. With their third, that could get Nicholas in this game, however, because they'd like to have Blake down the line. I think he'll come out. Too late. Another inbounds. Again, they beat him on the inbounds play. Heinrich. We have talked about this time and time again. The men are not seeing the ball in their man when they go man-to-man -man and out of bounds. It's like the Terrapins were looking around to see if Nicholas could get in in time. Blake on the run off the backboard. Baxter put back. Tipped up Wilcox. by Wilcox. Jump shot. It's there for Heinrich. He steps in instead. That's challenges, and that is going to... What a big call. Baxter stood in there with three fouls and draws the charge on Heinrich, and that's three on Heinrich. Now watch, watch this. You see Blake is not watching the man throwing the ball out of bounds and with the three-point situation seeing his man and the ball. 
It's amazing that fellas are getting caught on out-of-bounds situations and giving up such easy baskets. But Heinrich, Billy, the note here, that's three on Heinrich. Mouton, Gooden rejects. Baxter picks it up. Too strong. Mouton aggressive. And Baxter gets fouled. A lot of aggressive play, Jim, underneath the backboard right now, and see if Maryland tries to keep Baxter in the game again offensively. Well, Gooden has three. So concerns on the Kansas end as well with the Jayhawks star player. And Heinrich with three. So they've got a couple of situations, as does Maryland with Blake and Baxter. Good backdoor cut. Nicholas blocked Collison. Kansas sprints out of there. Heinrich with Dixon <laughs> knocking it out of bounds with the quick hands. He is amazing how he comes across. See a lot of foul trouble right there. And Gary Williams gets Blake out because he wants him down the stretch as a ball handler. And now Gary Williams figures Baxter has a little feel of the game. Brings in Holden. Miles doesn't want the jump shot, would rather penetrate off the dribble. Hollison backing him in. Good move with the body. Back in Holden. Hollison really has to be aware defensively now not to get in further foul trouble because I think he can really score against this Maryland team. He has scored 10 on the night. And look at Wilcox backing in. With Gooden with three, he couldn't really stop him. That was a dangerous play for Gooden. To the corner, Heinrich. No travel. Oh, that, there it is. One extra pass, Jim. Tough in that kind of close quarters. Monday on CBS, you can catch an all-new Late Show with David Letterman. All-new top ten list. Monday, the Emmy Award-winning Late Show with Dave. Wilcox expending an awful lot of energy in this game. Maryland's missed its last five shots, but now Dixon. That makes it six. Last touch by Kansas. Simeon for Gooden. Gooden out with the three. Roy Williams really was fortunate that Gooden did not pick up that foul on Wilcox. And Wilcox had the good move on the baseline. Gooden's been taken out of his game here. Four points, six rebounds. Only one shot made from the field. One of six. Dixon. Oh, he has such body control. Beautiful leaner. Miles. One thing Maryland's doing is they're taking away that delayed break that Kansas is so good at what made them the number one scoring team in the country. Boshi, big three. Got it. Jeff Boshi, the all-time three-point shooter in Kansas and Big 12 history. It's amazing how that three can put you back in it. Nicholas and Kansas. Nice block out by Collison. Gets the ball back quickly. A little spurt, perhaps. Miles, put on the line. And over the back, called on Wilcox. Holden had excellent position, but Simeon is so strong that he was able to go right up between the two. 21 for Dixon to lead the way. It's a four-point Maryland lead. Jim Nance with Billy Packer back here at the Georgia Dome. And pretty emotional night on Thursday, Billy, when the four coaches were brought together. And Gary Williams, I think, uh, really showed a side that few had seen. And then everyone was really touched by his comments that night about how much it meant to him to have his daughter and grandson here at the Final Four. There's Collison again with great low oh. post moves inside. A great move by Roy Williams to get the ball to the horse. Baxter a no factor in this game. Big advantage Kansas. Cuts it to two. Left open Randall. And a chance for the three point play. A switch inside that does not work out for Kansas. 
Collison and Simeon not realizing that they had left Randall wide open. Second on the freshman Simeon. Ryan Randall, I asked Gary Williams yesterday, tell me a player a day in advance you think might end up being your star tomorrow. They gotta make a difference. And he said it'd be, he thought Ryan Randall. He's had productive minutes. And the Maryland Terrapins break out of there. Mouton. Oh. Good pull up, but again, Maryland does not convert when they have the numbers. Kansas doing a much better job on it. Holden on the back of Collison. I really get the feeling with Baxter out of the ball game and no factor because of foul trouble that a huge advantage is Collison. And if Kansas will just take time to get him the ball down in low, they have a chance to really maneuver here. Second on Holden, fourth team foul in the second half. Heinrich and Nicholas got him with the body. Heinrich is very good as a slashing guard. You can tell by his stats, Jim. Went to the line 102 times this year. Has a nice blend of his outside three-point shot and getting to the foul line as well. Now let's see if Maryland does a better job in the out-of-bounds situation seeing the ball. Boy, if the pass had been made, but Boshi they had was a there, Boshi wasn't he? had a layup. And that's three fouls on Maryland on this trip down the floor for Kansas. Blake is going to come back in the game, so Gary Williams is going to go with a lineup now with basically his three guards and his two substitute big men on the floor. He is really trying to steal some minutes. Second on Dixon, 16 fouls, so the next one's the bonus. Good screening down and low, but on Lake with the steal. Lake with the steal and the four-point lead for Maryland. Oh. And Simeon spikes it out of bounds. Well, see, there would be a case, Jim, where Baxter would understand he's supposed to set a screen inside. Holden pulled away from Simeon. He should have been down in there screening. Nicholas, another example of what you're talking about, Billy. Out of bounds situations, poorly defended by both teams. Kick by Holden, reset. Time and time again, players not seeing the ball in their man. That time, Nicholas was able to weasel right inside. These are easy layups. Gooden comes back, so does Miles. And Wilcox for Holden on Maryland side. About a two and a half minute break for Wilcox, who was expending so much energy. Gary Williams had to yank him out of there. And on the other end, Roy Williams had to get good now because he had the three and didn't want him to pick up the fourth. So different reasons for substituting, but both well done by the coaches. Lankford's got to get him aggressive and look to score again like he did in the first half. There he is, Langford. And Blake out battles everyone for the loose ball. And he drives in, sets it up, Nicholas. Good kick out, wide open look. You got to take a shot like that. Simeon underneath. Doesn't seem like anything's being set up in Gooden's direction. Nicholas lost control of it. Simeon looking for a ball handler. Jayhawks have some numbers. Langford in traffic, and it's going to be on Wilcox. Monday on CBS, when Baby Bob speaks, America listens. You can catch the smash hit comedy that everybody's talking about. Don't miss an all-new Baby Bob after a special. Everybody loves Raymond on CBS. Gary Williams pleading his case down on the other end of the floor. Felt there was a foul on the play, didn't get the call. It's a third foul on Wilcox, so Langford will shoot two. This is a freshman that has really come on the scene for Kansas, and as I said earlier, is going to be a prominent player in the Big 12 in years to come. 
in every area. Young man is solid on the offensive end of the floor. He's wearing his lucky Texas Ranger socks that are tattered and cold torn, and he's going to wear me hopes for two more games. Well, he was all Midwest regional, so it showed that uh, he belongs with the elite. And Texas kid, and he goes out. There he sits on the bench. Picked all reserve team in the Big 12. He will not be a reserve next year. Blake with the jumper. Oh, what a tip in. Sensational leaping by Wilcox. Now Gooden looking for something to happen. As it jarred loose by Blake. Boy, Dixon showing signs of really getting after it on defense. Baxter with the good hands. Baxter gets past. Gooden went for the steal. Over Collison, pass. And a Gooden timeout. And a timeout. Beautiful play on that pass. It had to be perfect, and it was. Jim, here is a play that not many guys in the college level can make. Watch Wilcox. Unbelievable tap over a good player. A little eye vision look here, Billy, at the tip by Wilcox. An excellent screen just to get the play going, and we'll see right here. The ball goes up, but watch Wilcox come from nowhere and tap that ball, keeping just keeping him alive. It was tough enough. Wilcox with 16. And Maryland with the eight-point lead. And they go zone, trying to protect Baxter a little bit. Where does the jump shot coming from? Bushy? There it is. You called it. Three-pointer rattles home. Interesting. Gary Williams goes to the zone. We have not seen an effective zone playing by any team tonight. The matchup by Oklahoma got them in trouble. And there it gives an open shot to the number one three-point shooter in the history of the Big 12. He's hit three in this game, and Blake answers it at the other end. Now let's see if Maryland stays in the zone. They do. Wilcox out of the game. They're trying to give him a rest right now. Has expended a lot of energy on the defensive end of the floor. That three was Blake's first field goal of the night. In the lane, Collison wildly with the left hand. And it's Maryland ball. Dixon's only had two attempts this half, but his 21 leads the way for Maryland. Juan Dixon's 21 points powering Maryland's eight point lead over Kansas and Gary Williams making particular note of Dixon's heightened level of intensity in practice this week. He said our B squad was beating the starters in five on five and Dixon got up and went ballistic and told everybody to step up. Williams said Dixon has a higher level of confidence. He believes he can take this team to a championship. Jim. Well, he certainly led the way. Here he is with two more. Set play by Maryland. Beautifully diagrammed by Gary Williams. You notice how Baxter pulled out to the outside. A curl move for Dixon. Well run. Maryland has a 10-point lead for the first time. They're packing that zone back in there. There should be a jump shot for Kansas. Instead, they try to jam it inside to Collison and Nicholas and Dixon were battling for it. See a set play. What happened is Baxter pulled out, allowed the top of the key to be wide open for Dixon, and he moves so well without the ball. That was a... But nobody in college basketball moves as well without the ball as a guard as Juan Dixon. And he gets spelled by Mouton. That was a tie-up situation in the arrow to Kansas. Good and quick jumper. Wow, what a rebound. Baxter move Heinrich right out of the way. Beautiful pass. And Holden and one. Now there is a case, Jim. Kansas, a team that loves to run the quick break off a miss, gets some of their own treatment by a Maryland team that gets down the court beautifully. And it's the fourth on Gooden. It has been a monumental struggle tonight for the 
Big 12 player of the year made only one of seven from the field and to the bench with four. And now you have a situation where Maryland's getting a chance to rest Wilcox and Dixon with this kind of lead to have them really fresh for the final seven minutes. That's the biggest lead of the night on either side. 13 for the Terps. In the midst of a 12-3 run. And a foul on Heinrich. Setting a solid screen. Langford does not want the jump shot as opposed to the penetration and not taking what's available. That's his fourth. Two Kansas starters with four, and they're going to check him out. And we're talking about, Jim, two All-American caliber players with four fouls that have meant so much to the great run this team has had. First team in Big 12 history to go 16-0 regular season. And they were the reason. Holden off balance, and what a stretch here for Taj Holden. Maryland getting incredible production out of their big bench. Collison, beautiful touch. One of the few bright spots for Kansas at the moment. Seven out of 11 from the field, 14 points, seven rebounds. Blake really looking to penetrate off that dribble. Finds Mouton. Boy, that is just great teamwork there. Well, what made that again is Baxter coming out from the inside, setting up the lane for the backdoor cut. Second time he has done that in the last four possessions. Collison wants the ball inside. And he gets it for two more. You notice they're not calling that foul when a man's going up in the air, so no sense trying to draw that charge and flop. You feel like that's almost every time available. Yes, I do. They're playing a zone. They're playing it to stop the jump shots. So the inside is open. Hold on the inside. Roy Williams looking so intently. And there it is. You see what happened? Simeon is going out to get Baxter. When he did, Jim, there was no help inside. It's very well defined play by Maryland. Baxter's going to sit down. It's amazing how Gary Williams has been able to get production both offensively and with minutes. Another inbounds pass. Wilcox. And tipped in by Holden, who is taking over here the last two minutes. A seven point stretch by Holden alone. Boshi. Holden is playing like Baxter. <laughs> yes. This is, and it was a good job by Wilcox just to get that off. Look at, just as we saw Wilcox with an incredible tap, Holden stretched out, puts that back in. It's getting to be rather desperate now for the Hawks with 8.38 remaining, down 15 and a turnover. Maryland has not done a good job with numbers tonight. Nicholas could have been a backbreaker. Lankford with a push. Thursday on CBS, the investigators of CSI will look through the eyes of a peeping Tom turned killer, and you won't believe what they see. Don't miss TV's most watched show and all new CSI crime scene investigation Thursday on CBS. Third foul on Langford. Boy, it looks like a lineup right there, doesn't it, Jim? Everybody in a little bit of foul trouble, but Maryland with that great flexibility, and Holden gave them that flexibility tonight. Coming in off that bench is a big man. Byron Mouton. Another Louisiana product. The Final Four has been well represented by the state of Louisiana with players. Well, Donald Perry and Kyle Hornsby from Indiana, from Louisiana, are going to be there for the championship Monday night. Only one three-point shooter on the floor right now against this zone. Miles three. Will Cox not getting that rebound. Where is the scoring going to come from? They don't have guys that want to shoot the outside shot. Collison in the right spot. No shot, says Timmy Huggins. Outside. I think when you're down this much, if you're Roy Williams, you have got to come back in, Jim, even at the eight-minute mark and guys in foul trouble. 
you have got to come back with offensive firepower. You can't take the chance that you're going to get this lead back when you only have one outside shooter on the floor at this time. Big ovation for Holden, who goes out along with Nicholas. And just another Maryland wave of manpower comes back with Baxter and Dixon. One and one. Collison with one more. And there's Gooden. How long will he ride with the four fouls? I think you've got to come in with him right away. He's been out since the 10:39 mark. Heinrich as well. Two for two, Collison. Eight minutes remaining. Inside Wilcox. And there is a case where Collison, Jim, is going to go out for a double team against the number one assist man in the United States. He's 15 feet away. Not a gamble you can make. Again, where does the scoring come against this zone with Gooden and Heinrich on the floor? Carey, and that's a clean block. In the first half, Maryland blocked seven shots. This year, in one game, they blocked 15 against Norfolk State, the number one shot-blocking team in the ACC. Wilcox hammers it home. We are back and back on the floor for Kansas. Gooden and Heinrich and Billy, how is it possible to come back from 17 down? against a team like Maryland with seven and a half minutes to go. But Duke was down 22. They had a lot more time to work with, didn't they? Uh, yeah, they, Duke had them 22. No, I'm talking about Oh, you're talking about that one. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And Gooden with the easy basket. That's his first field goal, Billy, since the, well, about the 11-minute mark in the first half. Here come the traps by Kansas. Blake pretty shifty out there and uses that pullback dribble of his to see the court. Dixon from the corner. Oh, she's open. He'll shoot it. And if you're Maryland, you want to keep right on pushing this ball up the floor. A lot of time left in this game. Mouton with the 10-footer. You want to force Kansas to have to go ahead and play defense all over the floor, try to wear them down. Maryland stays in the zone. And Gooden. No numbers. Blake should pull it back. Good smart play there. Juan Dixon. Yes. 20-point lead for the Terrapins. We see a little change in the look of the Kansas players right now, Jim. That was like a dagger. CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Points in the paint. And a whole combination of Terrapins with the 42, like Taj Holden. You can get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online under the keyword CBS Sports Line. Langford at the line one and one. You know, I had a chance yesterday to visit with Roy Williams, and he really had made a point several times. And you were in his company, too, on Thursday night when he talked about how he wanted to approach it differently, his players to have a experience at the Final Four. Good hustle by Langford. You know, I think coaches really grapple with exactly how they're supposed to handle all but of this. You know, you, what, know? you know what the problem is, Jim? When you think so much about that, there is no formula. You've seen everything. Hey. Al McGuire's Final Four here. He never even was around his team, you know? So you say, oh, that's the formula that works. I, I just think you have to do what you're comfortable with. And eventually, that night will come if, you're, if it's in the cards for you to win a national championship. The other thing this zone is doing is taking some time off the clock to get a shot. But they need Bochy. He's had two good looks. Gooden put back in one. Okay. okay. And if you're Maryland, one of the things you do not want to do is to put him on the line. Thursday, on an all-new Survivor, don't miss a competition filled with excitement and split-second timing and a little controversy. The number one reality series on an all-new Survivor Thursday here on CBS. And 
here is Holden coming back in the game. Wilcox, I think Gary Williams just wanting to keep him really rested for that last three minutes. He and is, he's got four fouls as well. Yep, and he has uh, he has probably extended more energy than I've seen in any game that he's played. Heinrich, remember, has four fouls. He's got to be really careful reaching on Blake. Blake, where he made his other one. Not the shot you want. You want to use some time on the clock if you're Maryland. Boshi pull up two. Slides off the rim. Nicholas saves it for the Terrapins. And Kansas drops back. I think they've got to come out and do some pressure right here, even if it extends the Maryland lead. Holding by Langford. Juan Dixon at 19 at halftime. This is the action in the second half. Got seven in this half. There was the leaner, then the curl, then the kick out for the jump shot. Not much that he doesn't have in his arsenal, Jim. We saw him there. He was pointing at his brother. We showed you his brother, Phil Dixon. There he is. Hey, look. His idol. One more for Dixon. I love the award Dick Inberg gave out earlier today, the class award. He touches that chest again. Ritual for him. The first senior class award winner, Juan Dixon. Dan Dickow was second, Steve Logan third, and Kansas City Club will be giving that award away in April. Kansas, Jim. Excuse me, if you're Kansas, you have got to think about getting some shots up a little quicker and really pounding the glass. Miles. And that was tipped out by Collison. You can see the lack of determination right now in the Kansas players. They're very dejected. Still a lot of time to go in this game. The lead may be insurmountable, but this team needs to hang in here. Here they go with a trap. Blake with a pullback dribble denies it. The Kansas team that lost only three times all year, 33 and three. Ball State, UCLA, and Oklahoma. Oklahoma also beat Maryland this year. <laughs> Dixon is saying, I have no foul there. Well, he has been kind of like the stern leader of this team, and the really focused that the Final Four is all that I'm interested in. And that foul called on Holden. Well, we see that, Billy, so many times at the Final Four, a senior, whether it's last year, Shane Battier, Mateen or the year Cleaves. before that, Mateen Cleaves. Yeah, they have that steely look in their eyes, and just like, I am going to make sure that we advance. Fourth foul on Baxter. And the year before that, 99, how about Ricky Moore? So absolutely senior did, didn't expect to step up like that. Jeff yeah. Shepard in 98. It doesn't necessarily have to be your best player either to set that definition of how a team is going to play. Of course, Kansas had one with a steely look by the name of Danny Manning. Right. But not only had the look, but put up the incredible numbers to lead the team to the national championship in 88. The look and the game, too. Absolutely. Well, we thought... You know, with the way the Big 12 has performed all season long and two of the four slots here could possibly be a, the 88 rematch of Kansas, Oklahoma. But the Big 12 is on the brink of elimination here in one day. That's it for Heinrich, and you yep. knew that was going to take place. He was trying to hand check outside on Blake. That will be his fifth, right? Indeed. That's it for Kirk Heinrich. It's a big loss for this Kansas team because he does have the outside shot and is a good defender on the perimeter. There's his mother, Nancy, family from Sioux City, Iowa. His father, Jim, was his high school coach. There's Jim. He's still the coach there at Sioux City West. Have a situation now with Blake's ability to handle the ball and Gary Williams, I think, with masterful substitution in this game, Jim, when he had everything going against him early in this ball game. Baxter with the two fouls right away. Had to go to that bench early. He's been able to rest the likes of 
Wilcox, now Mouton on the bench. Dixon gave him a, a, a light blow as well. And Maryland has been content to stay in this zone. Dixon is looking to pick off a pass on the perimeter. Gooden will take the three. Yes. Nice. And that cuts it to 14, just under four minutes to play. Biggest deficit was 20. Maryland 85 71. Okay, you've got over 130 channels here. There's your local channels, and it's only $39.99 a month. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, as I was saying, oh, hi. Over 130 channels, $39.99 a month. Now, a two room direct TV system with installation is less than $50. Here's what we talked about Blake's ability to use that pullback dribble. There was a crossover. Heinrich can't quite get to it, and he reaches out with a little hand check. Blake is tough to handle there. He doesn't look to be as quick as he is, but very good with that ball. Blake with 11 assists. Very impressive total for the junior from Miami Lakes, Florida. At Gooden, three, right before the timeout. He only has made eight on the season before this, and that's going to be a hold on Miles. No, I, I don't think so. I that's think the other way. Yes. Uh, let's see which way they're yes, going. Blake, I think it's right. going to be Blake trying to force Miles off. Fourth on Blake. Talking about Maryland's inside dominance, and that's without huge numbers by Baxter because Wilcox has been so stellar, so too has Holden. And you see, Jim, what's going to happen right now. Gary Williams is going to come back with his experience. Baxter and Mouton coming in, probably Holden and Randall going out. But that was a big, big turnover by Blake. Blake Tana is going to Baxter back in. Blake is going to sit down. Gary Williams is going to let him just have a little rest, maybe trying to do too much. And Miles hits two, the National High School Academic Athlete of the Year Award winner last year, the Morgan Wooten Award. And he brings it down to 12. Let's not advance the brackets quite yet here in Atlanta. Maryland with the arrow and with possession. Up 12, 337 remaining. Blake on the bench. A nice play there because nobody was guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds. Now Nicholas on Miles and having problems. Uh oh, Miles again forces the steal. And another foul. The clock is stopped. Blake is going to have to come back in the game. I'm really surprised that they're challenging Miles. With Heinrich out of the game, who's the best defender they have on the ball, Miles becomes number two. And with Blake out of the game, Nicholas not used to dribbling the ball back in that area. Good play by Kansas. Jim, this game has got a long way to go. Miles about a 79% shooter at the line, coming off of two makes. And what's so important here, too, is if you can make the free throws, You've got that defense against the out-of-bounds situation, which Maryland's had trouble with. Here comes Blake back into the game. Miles showing good quickness with his feet, not reaching in till the last moment. Some wet spots on the floor being addressed. That's where Bushy fell down on the floor, coming down the floor, Jim, and uh, kind of sprawled around out there. And look for the full court pressure now by Kansas. They did not guard the man taking the ball out of bounds the last time. They cut the 20 point deficit in half. In a two and a half minute stretch. Blake back in there with four fouls. Hey, and Miles is really moving those feet, making every dribble tough. Blake has to take the open shot. That's a push by Baxter. And again, Maryland is stopping the clock and allowing Kansas to score. That will foul out Baxter. 
Maryland has gotten Jim completely out of running their half court offense. They're acting as if this game is a pressure situation. They should pull it out. They should have gone back into their half court offense, getting the ball down and low to Baxter and make Kansas play a little defense. Bonnie's mother, Edna Hughes, he grew up only 10 minutes away from the College Park campus in Silver Springs, Maryland, and the senior goes to the bench. So now we have Heinrich on the bench and Baxter on the bench, two of the key players. Gary Williams wants a timeout. Wilcox will be replacing Baxter in the lineup. Kansas at the line when we come back. Getting pumped before your next meeting? I like that strategy, but that game face could use a little work. You have to go for everything. That gives you an advantage over the competition. Thanks. Good job. Want to be on top of your game? Count on Marriott. For everything from business services to room service. Grinch up that nose. You just gotta feel the face. You just gotta feel it. Make three stays and earn two free nights. Call 1-888-MARRIOTT today. Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. Your Marriott awaits. We are back. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Bonnie Bernstein, Armin Katayan, and Kansas can cut into it a little bit more here, Billy. How about some strategy here? And Jim, not only can they cut into it, but they're able to go ahead and put points on the board with a clock stopped. And that's something that's got to be driving Gary Williams absolutely crazy. And I think if you're Gary during that timeout, you've got to say to your team, hey, let's get back to playing regular basketball and not, in effect, when you get the ball over half court, think we're being pressed. Now Baxter out of the game. Wilcox back in there. You still have, with the exception of Baxter, the regular starting lineup. Made free throw allows once again for the full court pressure. Dixon wants the ball. This is a good move here by Maryland. Because Lankford not as good at guarding the man out in this open court area and you want to get Dixon on the foul line with a cheap foul here. Three minutes remaining. Nine-point game. Maryland's gone over three minutes without a field goal. And they fail again on this trip. There's Miles another foul. Is heading to the line, and that's on Holden. Gary Williams has got to be going crazy because they are stopping the clock with their own ineptness on defense. That's four on Holden, four on Blake, four on Wilcox. Now, see, there's no need right here if you're Holden to try to go for a steal against a quicker man and you're from behind. Even if they get the ball down the court, 20 seconds is critical. Gary Williams is beside himself. And should be. And Miles at the line. He has been really solid here down the stretch. Not that time. Former it, quarterback at Jefferson High back in Portland. Played two sports. And we've got two players out, one on each side. But three Terrapins. Jim, I think if you're Maryland, you should get the ball in Dixon's hands, not Blake's. That's going to be a foul on Miles. To send Blake to the other end on the whole double bonus. And the reason I say that is you can use Blake to come back to the ball after you've gotten it over half court. Blake seems to be not quite sure what he wants to do with the ball when he gets it into his half court area. Dixon, with his experience, would have a much better idea. And if he gets fouled, you put one of the best free throw shooters in the country on the line. Second half free throws in the tournament by Maryland. Look at that, 48 of 52. Roy Williams, and right behind him there is assistant coach Neil Doherty, just named on Monday the new coach at TCU after seven seasons as an assistant to Roy, recruited to Army by Mike Krzyzewski. And we'll be taking, there's a missed shot right there by Maryland. You talked about how well they were shooting free throws. Take Billy Tubbs' spot. Miles with the three. Big shot. Tipped up. Collison had a hand on it. Kansas ball. Billy Tubbs, I understand, may go back to Oklahoma, Jim, as the TV announcer. I didn't want to throw big news at you. I think he would have something interesting to say. Oh, I bet he would. Nine-point game, two and a half. Hollison banks it home, a chippy. Again, you see that the flop is not being called at all tonight. It's a 
surprised Dixon didn't take Gooden. Oh, Miles again. Collison, who's had an excellent night, and you can see once again that the officials are not calling that flop. No sense doing it. You might as well hang in there and play solid defense. 21 for Collison, 15 in the second half. Like Heinrich coached in high school by his father at Iowa Falls High School. They were 101 and 1. Yeah. Look at this, another miss. Well, what brought Maryland to this position was their incredible free throw shooting. As I said, next to St. John's in 69, they had the best free throw shooting ever in the NCAA tournament. At the 6.06 mark, this was 83-63. One of two for Blake. Little three here, and oxygen will be in short supply in Atlanta. Yeah, it is. And Roy Williams gets a timeout so he can go back on defense. Good call here, and Jim, you were right on it. 87-82, a 19-4 run. Boshi with the bullet for three. Ah, spring. Mowers mowing, blowers blowing, and the Home Depot has them all in full throttle. Come in now through March 31st and get no payments and no interest till January 2003 on any lawn and garden purchase of $299 or more with your Home Depot consumer credit card. You'll find great brands like Toro, Honda, and more. Buy now and we'll even extend the warranty on all Toro and Honda mowers for an additional year. So come in now through March 31st and get a jump start on the season at the Home Depot. Almost hard to believe. It was 20 points with six minutes and change to go. A Maryland team haunted by a 22-point blown lead last year at the Final Four, but that was in the first half. The lead is five, and they've got three players with four fouls on the floor right now. Comes the double team. Wow, Jackson. I'm surprised he took that shot. Not a good idea. For some reason, Maryland doesn't understand that the clock is one of their teammates in this game. That was a 10-second possession. Oh, and a traveling call on Miles. If you're Gary Williams, you have to say, guys, use up as much as the 35-second shot clock as you can. You would think if they're going to try to foul anyone, it would be Randall. Well, I think it's too early for that, Jim. You're down, you only have two possessions right here. Will they use much of the 35? I think they should use all that they can. And get the ball in Dixon's hands for the last 10 seconds. They've worked this one down pretty good. There he is, Dixon baseline. Dixon, yes! That was the first time in about four minutes that Maryland played smart basketball. 30 for Dixon, a season high for the senior. Boshi lost the handle. Arrow, Maryland. Yep. I tell you, the miles travel was a killer. It really was. 87-82. It is amazing. It is amazing. 52 straight games for Juan Dixon in regard to double figures. But you are right, Jim. This year, his high was 30. He had 31 against Duke in really a breakout game back as his sophomore year. The first year he made All Conference first team. In fact, Mike Krzyzewski said that's as good a game as ever been played in Cameron Indoor Stadium by a, an opponent. Here we go with 55 seconds remaining. Got to come out and start going after a foul now. You can't wait. A lot of time gone by here by Kansas. I can't believe they're not fouling. This is not the guy you want to put on the line. Blake, who's had a couple of misses in the late going, will get two more tries. Well, seven, down seven, three possession game. You have got the foul. Good comeback, however, from a championship squad in this Kansas team, Jim, when they were completely out of it just a few minutes ago. I really think Roy Williams felt that this was going to be the year. Just a little more than a year ago as Blake has his third miss. Well, Jim, you remember a game that you and I did in Birmingham when we really thought that was the Kansas team that could not possibly be denied in a national championship and ran into Arizona. 
Lou Dolson's club just had it working perfectly. Well, a sweet 16 game, a stunner, but Arizona went on to win that championship in 97. Well, that was a lot, a, of, a lot of time being taken here. Well, we've That's, got Langford down yeah, with, yeah. it's like an ankle. I'm wondering if, uh, again, we talked about a slippery wrist. floor out here. Yeah, wrist. And this end of the court has had uh, all kinds of problems in this ball game. You'd hate to lose a score like this right now, but with an eight-point lead, you've got to be thinking three and then immediate fouls. Merrill. Yep. No time to waste. Got to put up the shot. Got to put up the shot. That's the man you want shooting it. Boshi for three, and it's down to five. Timeout, Kansas. Boy, there's a still a two possession game. So you can't allow the, the shot clock to be moving at all here, Jim. You got to foul and try to go three. There's a senior, Boshi, stepping up. The key point with this reset, Kansas, no timeouts. A made basket. They can't stop it. Can't summit. Full court pressure. Maryland faces now with the five-point lead. And you want to get the ball to this man right here, number three, Dixon. Good play by Maryland. You want him on the line. Not much more you could ask Dixon to do this year. All-conference defensive team, first team all-conference, player of the year, first team All-American. Only man in NCAA history that's had 2,000 points, 300 steals, and 300 threes. Two big free throws here. Not much more you can say about a guy that not a lot of was expected of when he first showed up. 23 out of 26 in the tournament at the line. Make that 90% right on his season average. Wilcox for Holden. Boy, Holden is uh, maybe the man that was the difference maker off that bench tonight. Terrific job. Good. Yes. And they still have They life. have no timeouts. That's a technical. They still, well, yeah, that's going to be that, it. They, they did not have any more timeouts at a technical foul. That's what we had just set coming out of the reset. Yep. One of those things we have seen, Jim, before in a Final Four. Maybe a little bit more costly in that one. Yes, Chris Webber more called his. Crucial time. But they did not have another timeout. And so now we have a technical situation. Dixon going to the line. Gary Williams uh, saying, well, our prevent game was not too good. How much Ooh. do we see in football when guys go to the prevent and the other teams make the comeback? The old prevents you from winning. That's right. And Gooden, who had made only eight threes on the season, not a guy that they look for from out there with two in this comeback. Two for two from out behind the arc. And uh, Dixon is going to be sent over to the side here. I... Gary... Gary Williams gets a chance to talk to his team. We'll see it right here. The shot goes up. Good job by Gooden, the second big one that he's made from out there. And then you'll see the timeout situation. He's asking for it, no question. He you wasn't cannot... the only one. Oh, no. Collison. Everybody's thinking that way, and Collison calls it. Gooden calls it. What Roy Williams might have been wondering about there is who was the foul called on because the technical would be a personal, and that would be the end of the game for, for Gooden. Dixon with a and he was out there a long time wow. Jim rare aberration you know you'd rather have your teammates on the line to us uh, simulate that foul shot as opposed to being all alone and Maryland inbounds at the other end Dixon has tied his career high of 33 and you want Dixon to break to the ball and get his hands on it once again Ballard trying to prevent it Gooden can't foul him. He's got four. Ballard's got to be the man. Timeout, Timeout Maryland. Maryland. 
16 seconds. We are dragging wow. it here. Dixon was hoping that somebody would just reach in and hit him, but it never happened. Just in time, the timeout, Maryland. It has been a most bizarre close to this game. It really has. It, it has been an unusual five minutes of playing time. Gary Williams standing over there a little bit perplexed. The only man that's ever coached in the Big East, the ACC, and the Big Ten. Taking teams from all of those conferences. Here's another wet spot out here. Good in spots. But he took all teams from uh, Ohio State, B.C., and Maryland to the NCAA tournament. Pretty hard to do, you know, Jim, to coach in three leagues of that So those three leagues. Yeah. Absolutely. Mouton. Well, you can see they are slipping there. Boshi is the one who fouls him at 13.3. Certainly hope this is not a problem, Jim, that arises for Monday night because it's significantly very slippery on this end of the floor. Doesn't seem to have been a problem down on the other end. Mouton, a 75% shooter. Young man who had to suffer tremendous adversity this year as well, Jim, yeah, with losing loss. his brother after the ball game had to go home. He was murdered in Houston. Big brother Kevin killed in early December, and he thought about really giving up the rest of the season. And one player made a big difference in talking him through that tragedy was Juan Dixon. Two for two, Mouton, very clutch. Wilcox checks in. That makes it a three possession situation here. The two by Mouton, huge. Boshi one more time. Boy, oh boy, he's on the mark again. Doesn't get it to go. That's going to do it. it. One tenth of a second, and Miles will send Nicholas to the line. I was just looking at Juan Dixon as he walked by us. There's no smile on his face, just a steely stare up in the sky. Now he hugs Blake. And there you can see the anguish on the part of Kurt Heinrich, who had such a great year, right over with his coach, Roy Williams, with their heads down. It's got to be so tough for this team that was number one in the country for so many weeks. Maryland on Monday night will play game number 2002 in the history of the school. And they will seek the 2002 National Championship. Maryland on to the final for the first time in school history. A program that began back in 1923. Well, I wonder how many brackets at the very beginning had it this way. And it should be a dandy. Indiana and Maryland for the national title. ACC meets Big Ten. Monday night for the championship. As we welcome you back to Atlanta, we remind you coming up next on CBS, for many of you, your late local news comes your way. That's after we wrap things up here at the Georgia Dome. Once again, our final score, the Maryland Terrapins defeat the Kansas Jayhawks by a score of 97 to 88, and Maryland advances to Monday night's final against the Indiana Hoosiers. Our Chevrolet players of the game for Kansas, Nick Collison with 21 points and nine rebounds, and for Maryland, another superb game out of Juan Dixon, 34 points on the night 10 out of 18 from the floor Maryland a winner 97 88 let's send you down to the floor now and join Jim Nance and Billy Packers with the winning Terps all right thank you Greg and I'm here with Juan Dixon and Taj Holden coach Williams you're on to the championship but what's the feeling after that very strange sequence the last Great six feeling. minutes when that buzz went off and then we were playing in the championship so it doesn't matter you know it, it, you just have to get through it and win it any way you can at this level and we did how about the play of uh, your man here Juan uh, Juan's, that was a, you know a good performance for Juan and he's He's just been the guy all year that we can go to. We know we know he's going to be there, and that's a great feeling when you when you get here to know things aren't going to change. Gary, when you had to go to somebody else, though, Baxter tonight in foul trouble right off the bat, and you brought this young man in and really, really did the job for you. Well, Taj is a, a very mature junior, not one of our seniors, but 
he does a great job and Taj probably knows the game as well as any of our players guards or inside players and that really helps him when he gets out there I think Taj sees things from the bench when he gets in there he knows what to do Taj what? you made the Jersey Shore very proud out there tonight and what about playing Indiana on Monday night oh yeah it's going to be a great game you know a lot of people were doubting them but a lot of people were doubting we can make it this far too um, but we didn't we never doubted ourselves and we just came out and played hard tonight and Juan we watched a number of times your brother up there yeah. Phil celebrating every single second to have him here describe the feeling yeah, he's enjoying the feeling man uh, it, you know it's a great opportunity for us you know uh, and he didn't get a chance to play on this level and I'm out there playing for myself and also for Phil and hopefully I can keep on doing well you've got one more game in your remarkable career one more time to put that Maryland uniform on what will that be like on Monday night against Indiana it's, it's gonna be a tough game you know Indiana they beat all odds a lot of people expect them to get this far but we're ready to play you know this is our year and hopefully uh, we become ready to play Monday night Good luck. Good luck, Good luck to you Thanks, all. Thanks, the Maryland Terrapins Thanks. on to the national championship game. I'll see you Monday night. Same here, James. Now let's go back up to Greg and Clark. Jim and Billy, we'll see you Monday night as well. You talk about a weird circumstance. The last four times Kansas has been knocked out of a Final Four game, it's been by an ACC team at too much Maryland tonight and way too much Juan Dixon. You're exactly right. And Taj Holden played like Jeff Newton did for Indiana in the first game. Off the bench, big numbers, big contribution. But I think you're right. It was Juan Dixon, his leadership, his tenacity, and his production. We still have work to do here in Atlanta tomorrow at noon Eastern CBS Sports presents the ultimate road to the championship and then at 1230 Andre Agassi and Roger Federer face off in the men's final of the Nasdaq 100 Open. We'll be here at 330 Eastern to bring you the Midas final two show followed at 430 by the CBS Sports special glory in black and white the story of the 1966 NCAA champions and then Monday night we conclude our 21st year of NCAA tournament coverage with prelude to a championship at 9 Eastern followed by the national championship game Indiana and Maryland we thank you for being with us on this terrific day of basketball for Clark Kellogg and for all of our CBS Sports Final Four team I'm Greg Gummel in Atlanta thanks for watching everyone we'll see you tomorrow Tomahawk. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Amazing. And now the alley-oop reverse. With the bite-sized bowl-shaped design. Oh, my. And what everyone's been waiting for, the two-handed thunder. For the perfect dip every time. Oh, the judges have to be impressed. New Tostito Scoops. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip.